HQ Spotlight, our training camp tour continues in our Jonathan Jones, crisscrossing New York and New Jersey, deciding to make a stop at Giants training camp for us. JJ, we got you there. I know you were in Manhattan yesterday, drove up to New Jersey, so we appreciate your work here. Let's talk about the third season, though, under Brian Dabo. Look, first season, he went 9-7. and seven. People absolutely love this guy. Last year, DJ goes down with a couple injuries. They have a losing season. They've only had one winning season since 2017. What is your three? looking like under Dayball. So Brian Dayball is very, very likely going to be calling the offensive plays for the New York Giants this year. So that should be a good thing for the Giants and Daniel Jones. He's been spending a lot more time with the quarterbacks and in the meeting room. And we're going to see him continue to call plays this weekend against the Houston Texans in the second preseason game, just like we did last week. Uh, there is a sense of urgency around here, and it's understood. Daniel Jones signing that four-year, $160 million contract more than a year ago. Now he's going into year two of that deal. And it is a deal that, frankly, the Giants can get out of after this season at very little penalty to them if he does not perform. So a lot of pressure, a lot of expectations, a lot of urgency. But in talking with Daniel Jones, he says, look, I don't necessarily feel all of those things. I know I have to be better. I know that we need to win. But in terms of what I put into this, it's not like I've been putting in 90% and now, oh, wait, I can go get the other 10%. No, he knows what he has to do in order for this team to get back to where they belong. And somebody, Brian Dayball, very familiar with running back Devin Singletary, uh, who is now taking the place of Saquon Barkley, no longer there. We know at least for Devin Singletary, he says, look, I love being back with Brian Dayball. I'm familiar with this offense, but how is he fitting in from what you've seen at practice? So far, so good. And look, he's not Saquon Barkley, and I think a lot of people understand that. But what he is and what he can be and what he has been, I should say, is the leading rusher on a lot of playoff teams. And so he has the durability. You know that if you're playing meaningful football in December and into January, it's likely that he's going to hold up and that he's still going to be able to be that guy when you do get into the playoffs because he has been that guy. So that is helpful for this team. And there's probably going to be a little bit of a running back by committee with this group. But that's what happens when you have a $40 million quarterback, when you've paid your left tackle in Andrew Thomas, and then you look on the other side and you just go out and trade for and pay a Brian Burns. Eventually, you kind of can't pay the running back. And so that's going to be OK. But this is a team that uh, now that they have some wide receivers that can finally get some separation, we're going to see Daniel Jones, hopefully, prayerfully, throwing the football down the field a whole lot more than we have in years past. Yeah, look, he had two big injuries last season. The first one came in week five. He was dealing with a neck injury. Uh, but the biggest one came in week nine. He went down with a torn ACL. We have not seen him since. Shows up with a beard. People are loving that. Maybe looking a little bit more mature. Uh, I know he dropped a 70-yard um, no pun here dime. A great touchdown the other day. But what are you seeing from him? How are the Giants feeling about Daniel Jones coming back healthy? Well, I asked him earlier about the knee. When did you sort of reach that threshold where you finally trusted the knee? Anytime that a guy goes through an Achilles or an ACL, I hear a lot about how, yeah, I'm 90 percent there, but then there's going to be that little extra. And until I get to that little extra, until I can fully trust it, then I won't know. And he said it was a little bit before training camp that he finally felt that he could go out there and do everything he needed to do at training camp so that he wasn't doing it for the first time so that he could trust the leg. And so uh, I'm excited to watch him play in the preseason game against the Houston Texans. I think that we should see him for at least a full quarter, maybe into the second quarter, depending on how things are going. And we should see a more efficient Daniel Jones taking a couple opportunities, some chances. And look, after a game uh, last week where Malik Neighbors didn't get a ball thrown his way from the backups, I think that that should be changing here in the first quarter if he plays against the Houston Texans. JJ, going to the other side of the ball, look, the Giants, they did make a handful of moves. Uh, we talked about Devin Singletary already, but on the defensive side, the GM for the Giants actually says, I think the biggest splash we made was getting linebacker Brian Burns. He said he makes you be perfect. What is his defense looking like with him added to it? So you have Brian Burns, but you also have a new defensive coordinator in Shane Bowen. So they've had Wink Martindale the last couple of years who was going to blitz you no matter what you felt. Uh, what the down and distance was, it was going to be a blitz because they were going to manufacture the pass rush. This is a little bit more of a traditional defense. And when you have that front that they have, such a good interior defensive line, so good, in fact, that they could trade one of their guys to the hated division rival Dallas Cowboys and everything's okay. 
what they have are bookends. They have Kayvon Thibodeau, whom they drafted a couple years ago, and now they go out and trade for and pay Brian Burns on the other side. And he's a guy who has kind of wasted away in Charlotte, North Carolina, with the Carolina Panthers, made a couple of Pro Bowls. But actually, did you know that he's one of fewer than 10 people who have had at least seven and a half sacks in each of his first five seasons? Amanda, more people have walked on the moon than reached that statistical marker. And so Brian Burns, I think, now playing in this New York market, playing in an, a de defensive scheme, rather, that is going to allow him to flash a lot of his power moves that he's been working on and been in the gym. We talked with him a little bit earlier about that stuff. He's going to be able to attack the passer a lot more than what he has been doing, where he's dropping back into coverage a little bit and trying to fool uh, maybe what the offense is doing. He's coming after the passer, and he's coming after them with a ferocity that, to borrow a quote from the L.A. Chargers head coach, a ferocity unknown to mankind. JJ, as you know, so much of the talk of the NFC East is going to be on the Cowboys and the Eagles. By the way, one of those games you can see this year on CBS. Where are the Giants fitting in in all of this? I mean, I, I hate when people say realistic expectations, but realistic expectations for this team in this division. I, I do understand. I mean, look, if we're talking about realistic, we're talking about a division that hasn't been that hasn't seen a repeat champion in what two decades. So, I mean, what what is realistic? I, I, uh, so we'll, we'll see about that. In terms of the Giants, I, look, I look at Dallas, and I do think that they are going to be solid, but they went out and just had to get some more pass rush help, and they still don't have their number one wide receiver, who should be fine and should be out there at week one. Uh, and Dak Prescott is going to you know, still be the quarterback, and uh, the sword of Damocles is going to hang over the head of Mike McCarthy and that entire coaching staff. In Philadelphia with a new offensive coordinator in Kellen Moore, uh, with a group that goes 10 and one and then uh, goes one and six in the final seven games, which Philadelphia Eagles team are we going to see uh, this upcoming season as well as are there too many gray hairs on the defensive side? I see a Giants team that over the last couple of years has been built up, that has some depth, that they feel good about where they are. They just need to see the offensive line gel and finally play together. And they have to have the defensive backfield prove it. A lot of young guys back there, not a lot of household names in the defensive backfield. So if they don't uh, start at a deficit in so many games like they did last season, if they stay healthy, if Daniel Jones feels that pressure and rises to the occasion this upcoming year, this absolutely can be a team led by a former assistant coach of the year and head coach of the year and Brian Dable that is absolutely making some noise once we get around Christmas time. JJ, I have one more question for you. It's the toughest one yet. Uh, people can see you every Sunday on CBS, by the way. So they need to know more about you. You are a lover of IPAs. Uh, we all know this. The best IPA, if you can get, in Dallas, Philly, Washington, or I guess New Jersey, New York. Where's your best local IPA? The best local IPA out of that group. You know, I had a, I had a nice time with some uh, sources in the Washington area recently. Uh, put back some nice East Coast IPAs. Okay. Really good, solid bitterness. So I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with the Commanders in that area for sure. All right. There you go. The Commanders, the third betting favorite to win the NFC East. Jonathan Jones, thank you so much for that. All of you've done on the road, taking a look at the Giants' schedule. They are kicking things off against the Vikings, and then a division rival, Week Two, against the Commanders.